We've got a hand throttle. Oh man, check this out. Welcome back everyone to another exciting Duckman Cycles and VW Garage video. And last week we had a very rare dual video release. If you like seeing more videos from me during the week, please leave a comment and I'll see what I can do about making more. These videos are so stupid. On the ATVW we made some big progress. We got it running with a donor engine from the 1972 Blue Super Beetle. We knew that this engine did run and was to need minimal modifications to tune it to get it to run properly. So this week I figured I should start out with a proper tank cleaning. I'd like to use the original Honda tank despite some people going to tell me and complain that it's too small. It must be too small. No, it's not too small. But how many mile range do I really need between gas stations? You know, seriously guys, it's four gallons, so if I get 25 miles to the gallon, that's a hundred mile range. About the same as my SV650 when I flogged the crap out of it. Speaking of gas mileage, it should be radically different than a full body Beetle anyway for both weight savings and aerodynamics. But the small wheel size will spin the engine up faster, so that will backpedal my miles per gallon a little bit. So I suppose maybe in the future we'll have a miles per gallon contest, and uh, I'd also like to do a contest for the weight of this thing sometime in the future. Can you guys guess the weight? I'm not fat. In the bottom of a tank there's quite a bit of sludge that stinks horribly and moves like molasses. But this tank is plastic, so no need to worry about things like rust. The best way to clean it may be to soak it with about half a gallon of gas and just shake it up. After all, it's already gas that's in there, even though it's like rotten, nasty, and just... It stinks! I can't think of anything better than just adding a little more gas that uh, won't do the job quite so well, and of course won't harm the plastic. So with that said, I guess we'll let it sit overnight and see what happens. Trying to blow myself up. Shaking around a gas can. Next to an open flame. Oh, Duckman's gonna die. Oh. Well, last week after installing the engine, it ran, but it was choppy. It had trouble sustaining itself, it wouldn't idle, and the gas tank kept falling down. <laughs> it seemed to be running on three cylinders, and I had a lot of people laughing at that. But progress is progress, and I'm happy with the result. But when working with the treble engine, I take a systematic linear approach, and I fix one thing at a time and look for improvement. If you fix everything at once, you may never know exactly what the real issue was. You big dummy! Based on how it was running, it seemed like it was a carburetor, so I started with cleaning it. And I was quite rather surprised to see just how clean it was on the inside. The outside, however, looked like it had been rolled in turds. A meatball rolled in breadcrumbs. But after a proper cleaning, the engine ran a ton better, it quit misfiring, and even idled on its own. But then the fuel filter broke, so I swapped it out with another for the time being for test runs. But I plan to use the Honda tank later. It still sounded like it was running on three and a half cylinders. Yeah, it just wasn't as strong as it should be. So I started pulling spark plug wires and found it was cylinder number four. I took the spark plug out and found it was rather sooty, possibly fouled, so I unfouled it using a torch trick. Just heat it up until the tip blows and then shove it back in. And yes, I know, I know, I know, this ratchet is big, and be careful as to not strip the heads like the other engine that I just got done replacing. Whoever hit it stripped the shit out of it. So anyway, I restarted it, and it sounded much better. I noticed the distributor cap was missing a clip. Ah! The cap was bouncing around a lot, and that could have also made the other cylinders misfire. So I got to fixing that as well. I don't remember the clip on this distributor being broken. This was probably something that I did when I removed the engine. So I'm gonna blame that one on me. I've got this Bosch distributor for a fuel injected Type 3. See the fuel injection port right there that we're gonna borrow the clip off of. This is an original Bosch. Uh, part number on it starts with VW311, so yeah, it's a Type 3 part. I got a whole bunch of those. I don't know if they'll help anybody. I probably won't ever use them myself. 
one of them just got a clip stolen from it. There we go. That solves that problem. I'm also noticing a little drippage over here. That looks like we got a little fuel leak. I'm gonna replace a piece of fuel line too while we're working over here. Get that solved because, well, while a fire might be great for video, <laughs> And it's one of those things that if I did have a fire, I'd want to catch it on video. Because if the worst thing is going to happen, i got to be able to pay for it somehow. <laughs> Reviewing earlier videos, I found that the clip was on there when I pulled the engine, and as well as when I first ran it. So at some point, I fucked it up. You fucked it up! You fucked it up! When the engine was restarted, it ran brilliantly. I still need to replace the belt, which has been throwing pieces of itself off at me. And uh, later when the engine is cool, I have to adjust the valves, which seem a little bit noisy on the right-hand side. Then I'll check and reset the timing as necessary, but we're off to a huge step in the right direction. Well, I had to take a short break. Yes, you guessed it. Because of rain. What else is there, right? So I got back at it the next day. I started by dumping out the bad gas from the tank which had been left to soak, and oh my god that smell. I don't know why it smells like the old two-stroke mopeds that I used to work in the past. I think that oil somehow made it ferment a little more. Now I didn't put any oil in this tank, and the ATVW is a four-stroke engine, so I don't know exactly what's going on here. I remember it more from the mopeds when I was a kid more than working on Volkswagen actually. Something about the two-stroke oil and the gas, it just makes it smell differently when it, when it ferments. And that's what this reminds me of, which is weird because I don't think the Honda Foreman, well, I know the Honda Foreman's not two-stroke, so I don't know why it would smell that way. Right, it's still a little bit in there. I'm going to leave it open to the air to dry. But that is nasty. You can't even see the bottom of the can. I mean, it's it's... So brown it's almost black. Wow. I was going to take this crap and put it in the lawnmower and run it, but now I don't know that I want to. I think it's too too nasty. Hey Crash, you helping daddy? Yeah, you helping daddy? <laughs> come here. Come here. Okay, don't come here. Okay, bye. Been nice. Bye. Bye. No hugs for you. No hugs for you. You want a hug now? Now you want one? Come here. Come here. Well, come here. Come on, Daddy, give you a hug. Come on. Come here. Oh, come on. Come on, quit being like that. Come on. <laughs> You're all wet. You're all wet. Yes, you are. You were playing in the pool. You're all wet. <laughs> this one is always within a few feet from me when I'm working out here, unless she's spla either splashing in the pool or biting her brother. Right? Still hasn't gotten her caruncles on her face yet, but her face turned white. It used to be, you know, completely black except for some white eyebrows. Yeah, and your little mohawk is starting to disappear. She's got a stripe on the top of her head. It's getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> your daddy loves you. He's going to try not to get any blood on you. You might have already. Sorry. Sorry. You can wash it off in the pool. Daddy don't have no herpetitis. Nope, you'll be good. <laughs> yeah. You ready to go down? Okay, go play. Yeah, go play. Go ahead, jump. 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 You don't want to go now? Now you want to stay. All right, if you want to stay, I guess I'll carry you around for a little while. <laughs> oh my god, Duckman, the environment. <laughs> There's always going to be somebody. Why don't you just dump it out? I left the tank out to dry, after which there was no more sludge in the bottom of the tank. It looked quite clean. So I put the tank back in the ATVW and ran a nice long fuel line to it. The gas coming out is now nice and clear, and there seems to be a little bit dirt in the filter that it picked up, but that's probably from the Mokart tank that I was running previously. The gas tank is high enough above the carburetor that I could almost eliminate the fuel pump. 
I was hoping that it would be a little bit higher, but I'm not so lucky in this case. But if I plan to add a larger reserve tank below the seating area, I'm going to need the pump anyway. This is something I considered, but maybe it'll never happen. Well, I guess we'll see. Well, I was getting set up for the next part of the video, which was uh, setting up a throttle cable. And um, I don't know what I did, but somehow I managed to mess myself up. Yeah. I don't even remember it hurting, but anyway. <laughs> Obviously, I'm taking a break. We'll be back after the commercial. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of thumb throttles because they tend to fatigue my thumb pretty quickly. Very uncomfortable. So I will be changing this out to a twist throttle. I think I have one in my junk pile somewhere. If not, I'll borrow one off of another bike and replace it. Well, that seems to be pretty good. Up inside of here, this is really simple stuff. This end of the throttle cable was modified. This is actually a stock throttle cable, by the way, from a Beetle. I used one of the stock Beetle Holdfasts, as you can see right there. But I cut down both the top and the bottom of it, shortened the bolt, and then wallowed out the hole on the lever here and made it fit in there. So that solved my problem with the Holdfast on the end. And I like these, I really do. I used to use these on my mopeds back in the 90s. And, uh, well, they're just fantastic. And here's a long outer wire. I don't know what this came from. Just whenever I have an old throttle cable or something, I always keep the parts because I always wind up making something custom. So the throttle cable runs on down through up here. And I put an adjuster right over here so that way I can adjust it. But, yeah, that's really all there is to it. Inside of the cover... You can see I ground down some of the webbing just a little bit because this stuck up just a little bit high and it was hitting the inside of it, but that's no longer an issue. So I can put this and screw it down, even though it's not staying. It's a quick temporary solution and well, it works. So I'm not gonna complain. Free is cheap, right? I didn't put any money into that. incredibly uncomfortable to reach it with my right hand. I just don't have any leverage unless I turn the handlebars <laughs> or sit on it, but I'm not going to try to get up on there right now. Anyway, it's running good. That belt we replaced is really sloppy, so we'll be snugging that up a bit, but uh, this sounds great. Well, I began to loosen some of the nuts for the exhaust, so that way I can get cracking on that. And that's about as far as I got for today. So you guys watching, don't forget to licky, likey, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle belly. That way you get updates every time that I upload a video. And check out DuckShit.net for all of my different social media links. And if you'd like to contact me, hit me up at DuckmanCycles at DuckShit.net. Thanks a lot for watching, you guys. And hopefully we'll be back next week. See you next time.